In this question, we are asked to find the perimeter of a sector of a cycle whose radius is 7 cm, which softened an angle of 180 degrees at the center of a cycle. So before you start solving this question, I think it is necessary that we, you should have a sketch of this sector. So first, this is a cycle with a center of radius. 7 centimeters. This sector of a cycle subtended at angle of 180. This means that it is on a half of a cycle, which is also 7 centimeter from the center to the other part of the circumference. So all together, all together, we have 14 centimeters. All right, the formula to find a circumference of a cycle is 2 pi r. But since this sector is just half of a cycle, so we can say divide by 2, which is equal to pi r, which is the same thing as 22 divided by 7, which is the pi, and r is given from the question as 7 centimeters. This 7 cancel 7, so we end up having uh, 22 centimeters. So from this side down to the other end is 22 centimeters. But we are asked to find the perimeter. We have to add the diameter with the semicycle. The semicycle is 22 centimeters while the diameter is 14. So diameter plus semi-cycle, this will give us the diameter is 14 centimeters plus while the circumference there is 22 centimeters. This all together equals 36 centimeters, which is the option A. Question number 14, it says solve the inequality 3x minus 5 greater or equal to 20 minus 2x. And here are some of the available options. To do that, x3x minus 5 greater or equal to 20 minus 2x. The only thing here you have to do is to collect the light terms. And we have 3x here and we have minus 3x to the right hand side. So we bring all letters and their coefficient to the left hand side and we take constant terms to the right hand side. So if you bring this one down here, you have to take this one to the right hand side. This one is negative. When it comes to the left hand side, it becomes positive. So we have 3x plus 2x greater or equal to. If this one crosses the inequality sign to the right hand side, it becomes positive. So we have 20 plus 5. This is 5x greater or equal to 20 plus 5, which is 25. We want to find x, so we divide both sides by 5. Divide both sides by 5. 5 cancel 5. So x is greater or equal to 5. Because 25 divided by 5 is 5. So this is the right answer. So this is the option C. Question number 15. It says expand these quantities. Uh, it is a law in binomial expansion using Pascal triangle that if you have a plus b to the power of 2, this is the same thing as a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So you can apply this law onto each one of these quantities. It's 2a plus b squared minus b minus 2a squared. This one, the whole of this 2a, you take it as this a, so you square it. If you square the first time, you have 4a squared plus 2 times this is 4a times this is 4 a, B. 
then the last term squared which is b squared minus you square this you get b squared minus this time around because minus is stronger than plus so this might this plus becomes minus yeah because of this minus two times this is 2b times this is 4ab then plus because we are going to square this so it becomes plus 4a squared so now we expand this bracket and of having 4a squared plus 4ab plus b squared this minus is going to affect each one of these terms minus b squared then here plus because minus times minus is plus 4ab is we'll turn this one to ne negative sign 4a squared now we collect the like terms we have 4a squared here we have 4a squared here but this is negative while this one is positive so they cancel out we have b squared and b squared that one is positive while the other one is negative so they cancel out too we are only left with two terms which correspond to one another making eight of them 4ab 4ab making 8ab this is the final answer and uh, I th this is the right option c and if this quadratic function is a perfect square find the value of c let me tell you something if you can remember this formula x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a this formula is very very important it is being derived from the method of completing the square you see the terms under the square root b squared minus 4ac will help you to find the real value of this c if b squared minus 4 a c if the value under that square root is equal to zero so it means the quadratic equation is perfect squared if the value is greater than zero it means the quadratic equation has real and distinct root but if the value of this b squared minus 4 a c is less than zero that quadratic equation has imaginary roots it has no solution so let us test for this in this equation, you know a is going to be equal to 4, which is the coefficient of x squared. b is the coefficient of the middle term, which is minus 12. And uh, c is the same thing as c. So we are going to substitute into this formula. We start with the very first one, which is b squared minus 12 squared minus 4 multiplied by a, which is 4 also then times c equals zero this is 144 minus 16 c equals zero now if you take this one to the right hand side it becomes positive so we have 144 equals to positive 16 positive 16 c you divide both side by 16 divide both side by 16 so therefore c equals 9 and which is the option b if a minus 3 is one of the factors of a squared plus 14a minus 51 find the other factor all right this is exactly what it means if you have a squared plus 14a minus 51 so let's write the two factors already we are given the other one which is a minus 3 so we are going to have a with another number here if that number be y plus y what it means here if you pick this negative 3 and multiply it with y it will give us this minus 51 and when we add them together we are going to get 14 minus 3 multiplied by y equals to minus 51 so we divide both side by negative 3 negative 3 this cancel this so y equals 17 so therefore this y here 
is 17. So we conclude by saying the other factor is A plus 17, which is the option B. Find the gradient of a straight line joining two points together, uh, these two coordinates together. And these are the options given to us. So our x1 equals minus 3, then x2 is equals to 0, y1 equals 0, y2 equals 5. Gradient m, which is the slope, is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So we substitute from this. M now equals y2 is 5 minus y1, uh, which is 0, divided by x2 is 0 minus x1, which is minus 3. This is the same thing as 5 minus minus plus, so we have 3. M therefore equals uh, 3 can go into 5 one time, remainder 2 divided by 3. So this is the slope of a uh, straight line passing through these two points, and uh, which is option C. A quadratic equation whose roots are minus 5 over 4 and 3 over 4 is we have available options here. So I have a shortcut for you whenever you want to find a quadratic equation whose roots are given. Um, the best way to do that is to say x squared minus sum of roots multiplied by x plus product of roots equals zero. Using this formula, it will guide you on how to find a quadratic equation whose roots are given. So we, simp we substitute this sum means to add the, the two roots together, which is minus 5 over 4 um, plus 3 over 4, all times x. Then we add the product, we times them together, minus 5 over 4 times 3 over 4. All this equal to 0. This one, they have a common denominator, so we can join the numerators together. Minus 5 plus uh, 3 is negative 2 over 4, which is 1 over 2. So x squared minus 1 over 2 multiplied by x plus this time this is negative 15 and this time this is 16 all this equal to 0 minus minus we have plus x squared plus 1 over 2x this is minus is stronger than plus so we have 15 over 16 to call 0. Uh, then we multiply it of this times by 16 which is the LCM. So we have 16x squared plus. We have 16 times this which is 16 divided by 2. 8 times x is 8x minus 16 times 15 divided by 16 is just 15. The whole of this equal to 0. This is the quadratic equation of whose roots uh, minus 5 over 4 and 3 over 4 and, and the right option here is D.